Hey everyone, welcome back to Tavian's World of Reptiles. I hope you are all doing well and taking care of yourselves. Um, so a while ago, I uh, had come up with this crazy idea that I was going to do a series about uh, the five families of snakes. So it's five top families of snakes anyway. Um, uh, and I had, just, I guess I had run dry on, on ideas and I finally got this one idea that I thought would be great. And I was gung-ho about, um, and I was like, I'm gonna do it. And well, I made the first video. Uh, and then that inspired a lot of other videos, so then a lot of time went by before the second video came out. Uh, and now it's been, I don't even know how long since the second video came out. But here we are, at last, finally getting to making the third video, uh, and the Five Families of Snakes vid series. So, if you are new to my channel, you have no idea what I'm checking and talking about. At some point around this in this video, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the little linky card things up or whatever so that you can check out those other videos, or I'll just put it in the description. And if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notified when I put out future videos. And if you are a returning subscriber to watch me ramble some more, you are awesome. Thank you so much coming for coming through. Now, today... We're talking about the Colubridae family, and joining us today is Tigger, my tiger rat snake. And as you can see, he is a very large, very impressive, beautiful snake. And yes, he does in fact fall within the Colubridae family. Now, typically, when you think about the Colubridae family, you also usually think about corn snakes and king snakes and those such things, which make really great beginner snakes. And this is why a lot of people end up getting colubrids as beginner snakes, because usually they get those more commonly known colubrids. However, this family is incredibly massive. It has snakes of all shapes and sizes and comes from all different areas. There are literally snakes who fall within the colubridae family on just about every single continent on the planet. Honestly, in my personal opinion, I truly believe that anybody who is interested in snakes, who has one now or is interested in getting one, could absolutely find a snake that is everything that they could possibly want in a snake in just this family alone. That being said, of all the family of snakes, the colubridae family is hands down the absolute largest of all the families. There are over 245 different genera of colubrids with over 1,700 different species within those genera. This family is massive. Now in the python video, I went through some of the different genera and the different species and the animals that fell within those species um, and kind of went a little bit more detail. However, because there are so many different species within this family, I am going to avoid that. However, I would like to actually go through some of the subfamilies and mention how many of the different genera fall within that family just to give you guys a little bit of an idea now of course as I said in that video I am not very good at all these scientific names so I am likely to butcher them some of them I won't even attempt it but I will absolutely put them across the screen so that you guys can uh, do your own research and look more into it if you want to and see how it is spelled and maybe you actually hey, get a better idea of what I'm actually talking about now First up of the currently known subfamilies is the Sibnophini. Sibnophini. This has two different genera. Next up we have the Natricini, which is supposed to have 37 different genera. Then we have the Pseudoxenodotini. <laughs> and that is supposed to have two different genera. Then we have the Dipsodini. And this has 98 genera, as there, well as the gray and I, which is one genus. Then the cal calamarini, which has seven genera. The ahatulini, which has five genera. And the colubrini, which has 92 genera. So there you guys have it. Such a massive family. So much so, like, if you could just go 
go just to Wikipedia and scroll on down and check out this list of subfamilies and all the different nam names that are underneath it. It is so massive and so huge and so, so very impressive. And as I said earlier, they come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. Now, generally, the Colubridae family is a pretty harmless family. However, there are a few different species within the Colubrid family that have evolved a bit and have actually evolved to have uh, uh, produce a certain amount of venom. However, they don't actually inject their venom a lot like vipers or a lapids. They actually have elongated kind of grooved fangs near the rear of their mouth, which is why these animals are typically called rear fanged animals. Now, while they are venomous or semi-venomous, semi as some people might like to call it, they actually don't inject their venom the same because of those teeth. In fact, they actually have to spend a lot more time chewing their venom into their prey rather than just injecting it with a single bite like vipers and other lapids. Now, Beetlejuice, my mangrove snake, is a final example of that. He himself is a, a rear fang snake and does in fact fall within the Colubridae family. However, he, he does have those uh, grooved teeth near the back of their mouth so that if he were to get hold of me and latch on and actually get some chew, he could inject a little bit of that venom. However, the toxicity of that venom is really varies between species uh, of course I mean so every uh, semi-venomous snake is also very different from each other so some may be a little bit more potent than others um, but also depends on the person who has been bit in the anatomy of that person you know some people who have high uh, allergies to like bee stings and such like that might have a little bit more of a reaction than somebody who doesn't really have such an allergy so there you guys have it you know I could not possibly go into more detail about this family of, of snakes because it is massive. It is a massive family of snakes and so many different species with so many different care needs and it is just impressive and some of them are way more advanced than others you know. At first when I first got into keeping snakes I only thought about corn snakes and the such and they just didn't appeal to me. They were just like this basic little slender body snake. I've since very changed my opinions on corn snakes alone but I also tend to, did not realize that there were more to colubrids than just corn snakes and keen snakes. And since I've actually come across this fellow, I've done a lot of research on all the different colubrids out there. And for a minute, I actually didn't even realize that my mangrove snake was a colubrid snake because I figured that all uh, uh, rear fang snakes would have fallen within the lapids, but that's not necessarily the case, which I'm sure will be covered when I actually get to talking about the lapid family. However, I have really learned that this family is impressive. And so I've gone through multiple different Google videos and or Google pictures and to try to gather up as many different pictures as I can Don't to show you all just how amazing this snake family is and just how varying it can be. So the next couple of minutes of this video is literally just going to be a bunch of pictures of the varying different species of colubrids that are out there and the names that go along with them. So I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Please take care of yourselves, love your loved ones, love your reptiles, love yourselves, and you guys keep spreading those herbs.